PTO Challenge Daytona Review. As I predicted, Gustav Eden won the title and I didn't quite predict it but Paula Findlay won the women's title. I know it's already about a week after the race but I'm going to have a look at some time against my predictions and also some geeky stuff about their bikes. For today's video, I have put all the time and some details in the description. So if you are interested in more details, have a look down there. And as you do, please do subscribe or hit that like button or hit that bell. Third, Laura Phillip. She swam pretty well, uh, 26 minutes 54 seconds, that was 27th. Uh, the pace was uh, 1 minute 22 seconds every 100 meter. Uh, I'm gonna break down the, uh, the time and the pace so you guys get quite a good idea. And if I don't really break things down, you can have a look down there. So bike, she had a third split, uh, 1 hour 53 minutes 12 seconds um, she she rolled her uh, Canyon speed max CFR that's a brand new one of course and uh, uh, someone like Lionel Sanders rolled that too um, I will mention about that later her average speed was 26.25 miles per hour or in kilometers 42.25 kilometers per hour now the the speed is ridiculously fast because data on the circuit is just so flat and going around and around but that was a really tough one because you can't really get out of the air position and if you do you get slowed down and just constantly pedaling constantly pushing so obviously that's really hard and that kind of reflected in how expensive they are, uh, about how tight they could hold their arrow position. So, and um, her run was fourth fastest for women, one hour seven minutes twenty four seconds. That's six minutes sixteen per mile, or three minutes fifty three seconds per kilometer. Total three hours thirty minutes, just three thirty. As I predicted, she was third. Second was Anne Haug. Well, as you probably have seen, she had a penalty, but I'm going to talk about how she could have been if she didn't have the penalty. Well, her swim was 13th fastest, um, 25 minutes, 54 seconds. That's 119 per 100 meters. That's pretty good bike 1 hour 54 minutes 26 minutes that's 8th fastest uh, she rode a Cervelo P5 the saddle is gebilmized saddle but I ride a synchro saddle which was developed with gebilmized well what I've noticed quite interesting is that she uses info crank and why is it interesting? Because InfoCrank starts from 155 millimeter length for the cranks. I use 150 millimeter cranks. That's because my legs are short. For many women, it is actually like proportionally their legs are not short, but they have shorter legs compared to men. I don't know that's because Gabilma suggested her to use that. It's quite interesting to see. And now her incredible run. Let's have a look. She had two minutes in a penalty box, but she ran 18 kilometers in one hour, five minutes, one second. Obviously that was the first uh, split. And the, the pace is six minutes two seconds per mile or three minutes 44 seconds per kilometer if we distract two minutes penalty from her time 
have paces 538 per mile or 330 per kilometer. Unbelievable. The winner, Paula Findlay. She swam very well, eighth fastest, 25 minutes. Her bike split was the fastest. I'm going to mention about Lisa Norden later. She did not finish. So officially, Paula Findlay has got a fastest bike split. Interesting uh, setup. Uh, she uses a uh, track speed concept. Kind of normal, but a beautiful car. One thing I've noticed that uh, she probably uses one by setup. If you shift too high or too low, you get more friction. So, you know, you lose a bit of wattage there, but on a course like this, it's perfect. I reckon. She had the second fastest run split, one hour, six minutes, 26 seconds. And yeah, really fast. 610 mile, 349 per kilo. So very decent. I'm not sure I saw this on um, her boyfriend's Eric's YouTube channel, uh, which is quite interesting by the way. Or some maybe some another interview she actually mentioned she was actually feeling comfortable keeping up with Liz Norton so that's how strong she was the only time she kind of like had to really push was overtaking but because she's been racing on Swift format she was kind of used to that kind of surges so yeah she was really strong and obviously she could run. In fact, if we just look at the time, even Anna Haug didn't have the penalty, she couldn't have caught Paul Finlay. But some might argue that uh, if Anna Haug could see her just in front of her, that might have been a bit different, but it's how it happened. Now I'm going to look at some women who couldn't make top three, but someone who had a very interesting race. Lucy Hall, she was like fish. She swam two kilometers in 24 minutes, 15 seconds. That's 114 per 100 meters. She could actually keep up with others to the end of the bike. One thing I've noticed was she had this Vision Metron drink system hanging in front of her frame. It just didn't look aerodynamic. It's just not like one piece or tacked away nicely. Her um, Cervelo P series setup was quite standard as well. Compared to some photos of her riding quarter, now P series is way better for her position. Accompanied with uh, her Giro helmet, it's just really a way more streamlined. So maybe that was the reason why she could keep up with others. But if she gets better set up, she could be even stronger on a bike, or she can save her energy on a bike so she can run way better. Maybe she can learn from Matt Hansen. Anyway, I'm going to talk about Matt Hansen later on. Next, a machine, a bike machine. Listen, Norden. Of course, she actually represents Sweden for time trial. So she's bloody fast, but that's unbelievable. I think she's sponsored by Scott, but she didn't have the latest Scott Plasma 6, but she had Scott Plasma five with drag to zero um, extensions. Her average was 26.75 miles per hour or in kilometers 43.06 kilometers per hour. That's monstrous but as I said Paula Finlay did really well too so unbelievable. Unfortunately she couldn't run. She looked very sad. In fact, I, th I think she was crying. 
um, that must be really painful too. Hopefully she recovers well. In the last video I said Nicholas Prigg would win the race but didn't turn out that way. She finished the swim six and she was on her brand new shift but she was wearing a um, UVX helmet but non-TT helmet. I think she didn't actually have proper fitting. When the race is so fast like Daytona, she got to have that kind of proper setup and she didn't have it. Her bike split was 30 seconds. Her run split was uh, seventh fastest. She was 10th. As the streaming was showing Spirit coming to the goal, I saw um, someone familiar, Elisabetta Kuridoli. I'm not sure if I pronounced her name correctly or not, but she's got an amazing bike setup. It's a heavily modified Scott Plasma 10, I think, because it's black and red. So I think that's Plasma 10, which is kind of really standard setup. She might have got that for her um, size so she can get the position better. But what's amazing about this bike is that she's got a very special bottle on her frame, which is sort of filling the, the bottom half of the front triangle. And that makes sense because that part, when we are pedaling, the air actually get really really steered up and when there is a separation left and right actually stays slightly cleaner and I, I believe that's the effect she was looking for. You can have a look at the bike on her Instagram so go and have a look very interesting. What else has she got? It's really interesting because not only that, she's got tri-rig front brake accompanied with Sigma stem. Sigma is a tri-rig stem and with that stem she can actually have the cable for the front brake just just like go, going like straight to it. So there is no need for the cable housing to reduce the drag. Also, she's got revolver um, arm caps. I'm not sure what extensions she was using, but uh, it's got a, a drinking straw integrated. But what's even more interesting is that she's got power oval front chain ring one by setup. How geeky is that? And I don't know, it's my guess, but maybe that contributes to her, her run. Now, men. George Goodwin. Before the start, he was saying like, yeah, maybe top 20 realistically, then he'll be quite happy kind of thing. Look at the result, he was third. So, swim. He was 31st out of the water. His bike split was six fastest, one hour 39 minutes, 34 seconds. He rode Rebel Ultra Tri with Drag to Zero setup. The, that bike is actually quite reasonable. If I have um, kind of cheaper configuration, maybe I can buy the whole setup for the price I paid for my frame, the new giant Trinity Advanced. And that made me think like, oh, maybe I should have bought that because, you know, that was good enough for him to bring him up to that podium. But then I had a look at geometry chart and that didn't quite fit to my position so but if someone is looking for a new bike especially in Europe or in the UK fourth fastest run it's impressive under one hour over 18 kilometers talking about amazing run we shouldn't forget 
how Matt Hansen ran to the second place. He swam kind of okay, but 27th. He rode quite okay, 16th. He just had an amazing run, fast, fastest run. But before we talk about his run, I would like to talk about his really, really geeky setup. He actually has got his YouTube channel and he explained about the exact setup even down to the specification of his tires. So I'm going to talk just a uh, superficial stuff but if you want to know more nitty gritty about his bike go to his channel and look at his Daytona bike setup video. It's very interesting. He rides Quantanaru PR62 disc but it's not it's not a normal setup. It's rotor Q ring, uh, profile base bar and caps. That's because he wanted to have uh, a specific setup for his IO bars. He uses drag to zero Elgo extensions. Elgo's got the uh, sort of wider, more of a airfoil kind of shape, so it's faster. And <laughs> he uses SLF Motion Evo Aero Pulley Cage. That's, that's like a massive, massive pulley cage with a, a, a plate to reduce the, the air resistance. How geeky is that? <laughs> if you haven't seen, you got to see it because it's very distinctive. And he actually used Cask Bambino Pro Evo. Oh, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, it's, that's the uh, exact helmet Ghana used. Um, you know, Ghana, Filippo Ghana, the time trialist. Well, not only time trialist, because he does team pursuit as well. And he has nailed down to reduce air resistance as much as possible. I don't think that was the biggest point. The, the way how he ran was crazy because he just looked like sprinting like the last 200 meter sprint for um, only God knows how long he was just going hard all the way to the goal um, his pace was okay 520 per mile 318 per kilometer that's how fast he ran and um, some of his videos talk about running form and stuff and how good we have to actually utilize our torsion in our body and stuff but <laughs> as you saw the way he ran was uh, I, I can't describe that just ran whatever he could he did whatever he could I think and of course he had the fastest split fastest run of the day okay so second and third man I got the prediction wrong but the first Gustav Eden I made it I made my prediction correctly he was 17th out of water he actually controlled himself uh, on a bike that's very clever that's how people should ride anyway. He rode a bike, something very similar to my bike. It's a, a giant Trinity Advanced Pro triathlon version. But my, my version is TT version. The difference is the front setup, but he actually swapped the stem from the triathlon version to the TT version. Maybe he wanted to have a lower um, front setup just like me maybe because of that he was using between the arm bottle setup or maybe he couldn't use the front hydration system and uh, put the bottle in between his arms I don't know and of course he had a second fastest run split 58 minutes 16 seconds that's 525 per mile or 321 per kilo so very fast. Before the start they announced big names 
somehow they didn't announce Gustav Eden. I don't know why. Maybe because he's not part of PTO as a white card. I don't know why, but for me, Gustav Eden was very obvious choice. Or did I miss out? If you heard Gustav Eden before the start in announcement, please write in a comment. He was saying in some interviews like he would like to win gold at Olympics and in the same year he wants to win Kona. He might be able to do it. So what happened to the second and third predictions? Alistair Brownlee had a, a brilliant swim with Vincent Louis and quite good bike. He swam 1 minute 9 seconds per 100 meters. Fast. Uh, his bike split was 1 hour 40 minutes 58 seconds. That's 29.43 miles per hour or 47.36 kilometers per hour. Very fast. Alistair Brownlee was kind of like Lisa Norton. Um, I thought, or well, many people would have thought, well, Alistair is looking very comfortable and solid. And suddenly, suddenly, he was walking. He just blew up. In the preview video, I thought I said something too critical. And I didn't really believe in what he can do. But then thought, Oh wow, he just studied off T2 quite well and looking very comfortable, looking very under control and of course that was too much. His brother and Vincent Louis, they had penalty. At the beginning of the bike, they were just too close. To me that was so obvious they were in a drafting zone and I was so afraid that they were going to get penalised and they were. What about Uber bikers? Sebastian Kinlu. He actually swam very well for him. He swam 24.51. I think that would have been 33rd just in front of uh, uh, Ditlef. I'm going to mention about him later. So yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. The deficit after the swim was only two and a half minutes. So he was in a very good position. I can't remember what exact problem, but um, two weeks before the race, he torn something, I think. Disappointing, but if he can swim that fast, he could be quite optimistic next year. That's really good. By the way, Alistair Brownlee and Sebastian Kingle, they were riding the brand new Scott Plasma 6. And that looks really cool. Lionel Sanders. He was actually fourth overall. He came out of the water 40 second, about three minutes behind Alistair Brownlee. So it wasn't too bad, but obviously he wasn't fast enough. Obviously to win he needed to swing faster. But I think that's quite respectable. He is riding the brand new Canyon Speedmax CFR just like Laura Phillip. He rode fast but his bike split was third fastest. I think he controlled his bike effort. He started to run a bit slow but towards the end he actually picked up his pace. He was one, one minute and ten seconds slower than Gustav Eden. So yeah, if he swam one minute faster then that might have been quite different. So, who had the fastest bike split of the day? His name is Magnus Elbeck Ditlev. His average speed was 30.26 miles per hour or 48.70 kilometers per hour. Incredible, 48.70 kilometers per hour average. And he had a very interesting setup too. His bike was a felt FRD, I think. But the most interesting feature of his bike was the two-spoke front wheel by Fast Forward. 
could have been on Instagram. He did an um, emergency velodrome session to save another 12 watts. And some might say, yeah, he just pushed too hard on a bike and blew up during the run. But <laughs> I kind of understand why he went so fast. That's amazing, but yeah, maybe he could have saved a bit of legs for the run. Um, maybe wasn't 14th, but he could have made top 10. But the bike is cool, so if you're interested, check out his Instagram. So Sanders had the third fastest bike lap, and the first was Ditlev. Who was the second? Sam Long. Yeah, big unit. He rode Argon 18, E18 plus disc I think that was what he was riding with 51 speed shop extensions it's kind of simple setup but uh, yeah he was riding fast his excuse of not being able to run that fast was uh, he didn't have enough energy so he kind of bonked I hope he gets it right next time there are up put on these guys in between but I thought these guys are quite interesting from the geeky biker point of view. But I have to mention this guy before I finish this video. Eric Lagerstrom. He has got an amazing YouTube channel. His girlfriend Paula Findlay won the women's race. In a Q&A live video he was saying that he might have had uh, uh, old expired gel or something and he had a real problem. He had amazing swim. He, his swim was uh, 23 14. That's 11th fastest. He had issues. The thing is, he got checked. He got checked by Paula Finlay. It kind of reminded me of Tio not being able to beat Rene in corner uh, when it comes to the marathon but finally he kind of broke it but yeah you know in triathlon it happens the difference between men and women is so paper thing if a guy has a bad die um, they can get checked easily by other women that's so cool because if we look at the history of a sport when did women start running a marathon think about it and amazing how fast women have become and started kicking so many men's ass including pros so Eric if you do watch this video I don't think you would watch this but please do not take it personally I'm pretty sure you can have a good race next time and maybe good to start racing on Swift as well apparently that's good for surges Anyway, this is my review. As I said, the time and uh, some other interesting things like Eric's YouTube channel and someone's bikes and some geeky parts and stuff. I put heaps of links down there. So please do have a look. Push the subscribe button, bell, like, whatever. And see you in the next video.